Hey guys, welcome to the Traditional Bowling Wilderness Podcast. This is Jason Samkovic. Today we're going to talk about tick removal. Yes, ticks, okay? Like we're seeing here, the stuff that we're talking about, ticks. And, uh, you know, when I lived in Michigan, we had the occasional deer tick where I was, but 99% of the ticks we dealt with were uh, big dog ticks, okay? That were pretty harmless and not too much, but I would get literally... 50 of them on me a year uh, without fail. I mean, there were just tons of them. I got them on all the time. I didn't wear Promethrian, things like that. I wasn't worried about them because they were dog ticks I mean, most of the time. Occasionally a deer tick, but 99% of the time it was dog ticks. Um, and they're pretty harmless. And uh, what I would do is I would take them off and I would save them. Um, any ticks you get on you where they're embedded into you and they're actually already locked on, if you take them off, you want to save them. Okay, saving them is an important factor. At home, put them in something like this. I you can use a pill bottle, anything of that nature. This is something that I bought to put gun oils in, and I got syringes that go on there so I could use them for gun oils. And uh, but I would take something like this, and I would put those ticks in here, and then just set it in my windowsill, and they die from the you know being in there. But I always had them if I ever had to have them tested. Um, in my car, I keep this old case for uh, US or for uh, SD cards. And in here, I actually have two ticks, two little ones. I don't know if you'll see them in there. They're very small. These are from here that I picked off me um, this year. Um, like I said, they're kind of kind of small, kind of hard to see in there. They're very little, two very little ticks. But, um, you know, you want to have some kind of container to save them in. That way, if there's any issues down the road, you have the tick that can be tested. So something like this is very easy to throw on my center console and out of the way. Um, and I can keep those ticks in it real quick if I pull them off in the field or in a car. If I pull them off at home, they go into something like this and I do save them. Now for those bigger ticks, what we've always used has been these tick keys. Okay, These things work amazing on bigger ticks, like the dog ticks, things like that. Uh, but what it is is basically you would take this head, put it over top of the tick, and then you're going to pull his nose right into this slot. And then you can pry him right up out of your skin and you're making sure you're not leaving any mouth parts. So these little tick keys, they weigh nothing. Um, this one's been in my truck for probably five years. Uh, we also have another one of these in the kitchen in here too, or, and, or I mean the bathroom. But these things were great for that. You just, like I said, you get a tick on you, slide it over its head, slide it down so his mouth parts in there, and then you just pry up like that and he pops out and then you just dump them right into your container. So these little bitty tick keys have always been very, very valuable. They work like a champ, but they work mostly on bigger ticks. Uh, since I'm down here in Georgia now, the ticks we're dealing with down here, uh, the small ones, the little deer ticks, the black legged ticks, the, all these little ticks that are here, they're so small in size, like I was, I'm, I'm showing you, um, actually I'll bring this over here. I'll set this where you can kind of see it. Let's see here. I get them both in that window right here, but you can see how little, I'm going to try tipping this slow so they don't fall, but how little those two ticks are that are in there. I mean, they are teeny tiny little dudes and two very, very little ticks. So um, with those, you know, it doesn't work very well. We also Now, this is only two of the ones that I had in the car. Um, I've also had three of them on me here, but they've died um, coming out because they've been latched in because of me trying to use this tick key, which didn't work. And then we had to go in and use needles. We had to use regular tweezers to remove them, the rest pieces of them, and it leaves, it leaves you cut up and open for infections and things like that, trying to get them out of there. Um, so we started, I, I bought these. And now I've used these one time already, and they work incredible. But these pliers here, they are made by Tickies. I will put links to all this stuff down below because there's great options. But um, And it's, what's nice, these pliers come with the, they give you the directions on how to use it. All the details are in here. Uh, recommend it, recommendations. They give you a magnifying glass, which is really nice. Just a little credit card size magnifying glass. And I used to carry one of these in my wallet all the time because you could use it to see where those ticks are and make sure you got everything out of them, use them for splinters. And then I also, on this side, I took this and I put a notch in it, like you see, right on this. This notch that's in here, like what's in the head of this tick key. Well, I would cut that V notch into the corner of my credit card magnifier like this that was in my wallet. And then I would use that to prop those things out in the field too. So, uh, but they give you this magnifying glass, which is nice. 
We've already always used a magnifying glass for ticks too, so that way again you can really see how bad in it is or if you got everything out. So a magnifying glass is a vital important tool for that. What's nice about something like this is this is also a fire starter option in your pocket with you. And you can use it for anything you need, obviously, but it's nice. They give you this for free with this automatically. Um, and you put this in your wallet, and like I said, you always got a magnifying glass with you, so it works great. I also have a magnifier app on my phone, which will let me do that too and zoom in real close. But it's very important that you're able to magnify with a magnifying glass of some sort or an app on your phone, but to make sure that you can get in there and see you got everything. Now, <clears throat> the beauty of these, these Tick Ease pliers, I got two because one's going in my car, one is standing in the bathroom here. We deal with a lot of ticks. Um, you have this V notch set up on the back of here, just like what this tick key is. Okay, very similar setup here. So if you have those bigger ticks that are on you and they're big enough, just slide that under, get his head in there, and then you can pry until he pops out, and then you can throw them into your container. Very simple, very functional. If your dog's got ticks on them too, very easy to just come in, get under there, pop, you know, pop, pull them right off, pop, pull them right off. It does a good job of getting all the mouth parts because you're getting it from right in there. You're getting around his nose and catching you're cut, his, he's sunk into you, his mouth parts are, and you're coming in, and you're going to end up getting that all the way to there so that his head, which is my knuckle, is there. And you're going to then pry him out slow, and you get really good odds of taking all of that tick with you. These little ones, however, these little, the nymph stage, the small ones, these little, little ticks that I deal with a lot down here, uh, you just can't use that notch you just can't use this tick key very well for um they're just so small it's not it doesn't work as well you also can't use a normal pair of tweezers because the shape of these you can't really grab down around the head to get to those mouth parts and be able to pull them out without screwing something up and squishing his head and pulling his head off of them so these tickies ones you can see the difference in shape and these will let you get right up under there real precise, close them, and then pry again and pull him out of there. So you're not yanking, you're not grabbing and trying to yank him out, which is hard to control, and you're going to pull too hard, and you're going to rip parts of him apart. I know we've been there, done that. These will let you get in underneath his head, grab that real precise, and bend it out. So there's a lot of advantages to these pliers. And this being a double function tool, having a wedge side, and I'll bring it in for a close-up for you, and a plier side <coughs> makes them fantastic. And they come with a credit card on there too, a credit card magnifying glass. You get it all right there. So it's really hard to beat this combo. Um, I like the little piece of hosing here, tubing that they give you to keep them closed because those are real real pointed and real sharp. So when one's in my car, I can leave them closed like that and they're not going to poke me. And the ones I'm throwing in my bathroom sink, they're, again, I'm not going to just jab into that. And, you know, they can be kept closed. Nice, simple, functional, and they work good. But it's a big difference based on the size of the tick with how, how well this is going to work for you. So having the right tool, I think, is important. These, these are fantastic for people living in the northern states. Okay, these work good on a lot of the ticks up there without a problem. Um, this, I think, is an upgrade and better. This, they say, you know, well, it's so light and so easy, and it is, and they're convenient. I'll never knock them. They've been good. But now that I live in Georgia, this does not do it for me anymore. I need something better. This gives me the option of basically what that does for the bigger ones and these for the smaller, more precise ones. So let's take a look at the difference here. So I'll bring them in and show you a close-up of these. This is that tick key that we are talking about. So you can see it here. Hoping the light's still good enough. There you go. Okay, that is that functional tick key. And it's very light out of aluminum. Works really good. I will have links to all these below for you. And then now let's look at the difference in the heads of these tweezers. Okay, so we'll put it against that white there where you can see. See what I mean? See how this one here, the regular tweezers, is not as precise and functional as those pointed ones are. So there's a big difference there in what you can really get to with them. So the normal ones are out, but this is that Tiki's one right here. Okay, you got the wedge on the backside for prying them out. 
and you have those needle nose type pliers or tweezers on there for that super precise be able to grab them and bend them you know once you hook it you can pry it out with the leverage of this can come in catch it and then bend backwards lifting that up out of there okay taking that tick right up out of your skin so these here these tickies ones absolutely awesome straight up highly recommend them all of these options are good but again now that i'm down here i'm i'm this is definitely the better way to go uh, if you live in a th southern state down here and you're dealing with these smaller ticks that we got down here. Even in southern Michigan, they got a lot of ticks there too and stuff. But remember, I spent most of my time in northern Michigan. So there was, you know, like I said, tons of ticks all the time, but they were dog ticks and no big deal. These other ones, they're a whole different world. And their mouth parts are much stronger, much tougher than what a dog tick is. A dog tick's a big tick with little mouth parts. All these other ticks down here, they're little ticks with huge mouth parts and very strong. The the force it takes to pull these ticks out, these, these kind of little ticks here that I was showing you, to remove those here, it's like five times the force of taking out a northern a northern dog tick. It's it's a whole different ball game. So having the right tools are tremendously important, and that's what I wanted to bring to your attention. And remember, you will need a container. You will want to save your ticks. If you develop that bullseye rash, if you do, and there's so many more diseases now out by ticks, and keeping these things handy. Now, there's also some antibiotics that you can have. Uh, I don't know enough about those, and I've never had to go into the doctors for a tick, and I've had, you know, I, I've had, I've had hundreds and hundreds of northern michigan dog ticks embedded in me without you know hundreds of them um and down here i've already had about uh well like i said two and three five of these in me but now down here i'm wearing permethrin a lot more and being a lot more conscious and i've been down here mostly in the winter spring is here we'll see how it goes but i'm um i do not like these ticks down here i do not like them at all i don't mind the northern michigan ones these ones these ones kind of they, they give me the eebie-jeebies with all the crap they got going on. So the second I find them on me, when I come home from the woods, every time, first thing I do is go in the bathroom and strip down and check as best I can to make sure there's no ticks. And uh, if I find any on me, I'm getting rid of them immediately with the right kind of tools. So there you go. Thanks for watching. I'll have links to this stuff down below for you. And uh, happy hunting.